we are in Southeast Alabama. We are about as far as South and East as you can go and still remain in Alabama. Our district has 14 schools that service students from pre-K all the way to 12th grade. We serve a very rural population. We have about 6,900 to 7,000 students. We have a, a wide gamut of student populations and socioeconomic statuses. We have very strong community-based schools. And then our district uh, has a lot of support provided. Our school system's motto is sharing the vision and shaping the future. And so our whole goal is when we're instructing, we have to understand that we're playing a role in shaping the future, not only for our students, but also for our communities. Several years ago, math in our district was an, it was a strong suit based off the state testing that is given in Alabama. Math was um, an area that we did not see as a big area of need. However, we changed state assessment to what is called the Alabama Comprehensive Assessment Plan called the ACAP. That ACAP started assessing students in a different manner than we had been assessed. We were used to a more traditional style testing, uh, a more pencil paper style test, but this new test is a completely different approach to testing than we had seen before. It was technology enhanced. It really shook things up because it completely altered the course pattern that we had been following previously. When we got our test scores back that year, we, we, we were shocked. It was not what we were wanting to see. We do feel like our kids had, had a good foundation on some standards. However, we realized very quickly that perhaps we were not instructing our students throughout the year the way that they were going to be assessed. So it, it just happened that we were in line for math adoption at the exact, exact same time. We felt very confident that our teachers were strong in content, but maybe needed a shift in an instructional approach, maybe needed a shift in rigor. We started looking into Savas and we noticed it had a great blend for us of you know some good, still old fashioned math teacher, uh, pencil, paper, and book work, but it also partnered it with some interactive lessons. And that was something where our students, what we felt like were lacking. They didn't have that exposure to technology and to technology style questions. So once we looked into Savas, that was something that we're like, wow, this, this has got the rigor, it's got the good questioning style, but it also is exposing them to a technology. So it just lined up all together. Now with the vision, I think, it blends in the rigorous with step-by-step -step ways on how to learn. I think it's good at that. I think we go into deeper conversations, especially with the homework and the word problems. It's harder on the kids, but if you're a teacher and know what you're doing, you work your way into it. I like that it kind of builds and then you typically finish each assignment or each section with the higher order thinking problems. So you're continuing to build that level of rigor in every lesson. In year one, we provided grade level meetings up here at our district office where we went through the program, looked at lessons to see what lessons really match what our standards need to be teaching. We built a pacing guide according to the skills that were most matched um, our state assessment. And we said, hey guys, let's bring your attention to some of the things that we think are gonna be bringing you the most bang for your buck, the most beneficial lessons. Let's start slow. And once we get these under our belt, let's start adding in more. We had one training through Savas, and then we did training our instructional programs department, partnered along with our um, secondary and elementary curriculum directors, had training for our teachers. Ms. Paramore, we had a training and she broke down that ACAP and exactly what we need to teach out of service and out of your vision to make that work. And she does a fantastic job. Any question I've ever asked, she's answered me. I've, I've called her and said, will you come to my classroom and show me how to work some of this? And she did. Spend a whole period with me just breaking it down for me. And I get excited and I get pumped up. And, and, it's, and it's a lot easier when you have good curriculum and good personnel helping you. A lot of us working together. We had to bring it to their knowledge to know that, guys, this 
is a resource. You as the classroom teacher are the most important piece in the classroom, but we just want to arm you with the best armor that we can provide. The one proven factor in improving student achievement over time is high quality instruction. If we don't have high quality instruction, it doesn't matter the quality of the product. Because the materials are good, they then empower the great teachers that we have in our district to then be able to implement and use in the day-to-day -day operation of their classroom something that is high quality. So they're matching high quality materials with the already high quality instruction that's taking place. And I think that's why we've seen improvements in our, in our test scores. I think that's why we've seen uh, improvement in our academic achievement. Within one year, our students in the state of Alabama for county school systems, we were the top county school system in math. This year, we are, we are in second place. We are very proud of our students. The missing piece was just that, just some, a good quality resource that our teachers could, could use and could use effectively. I'm thrilled about where our math will be in six, in seven years, when some of those students are entering the secondary grades and they've been exposed to a high level of rigor all the way from kindergarten up.